Pro Group Management. Workers' Comp that works for you. I'm Rachel Dahl on Nevada Newsmakers. Today we have Winnie Dowling, who's the State Director of the Small Business Development Center at UNR. She's with us for the whole show on an all-new Nevada Newsmakers. Reckless government spending on frivolous projects is bad enough. Even worse, spending to send COVID relief checks to criminals in prison. Senator Catherine Cortez Masto voted to allow COVID relief checks to go to the likes of the Boston Marathon bomber and hundreds of thousands of other convicted murderers and criminals, allowing almost a billion dollars in COVID relief checks to go to hardened criminals in prison. Tell Senator Cortez Masto to start voting against reckless, wasteful spending to stop inflation. Ahern Rentals began a signal gas station on Las Vegas Boulevard. Founder John Ahern grew the business by offering rentals. His son Don built on John's legacy, growing Ahern Rentals into the largest independently owned American rental company with 89 locations in 30 states. Don also brought his experience and vision to equipment manufacturing with extreme manufacturing and snorkel. Today, Ahern Rentals continues to bring its family values to a new generation. Learn more at ahern.com. I'm here at the Carson Valley Inn in Minden with Joey Whitaker. Entertainment here at the Carson Valley Inn is extraordinary. Yeah, super proud of the TJ's Corral, our outdoor venue, about 1,500 seats. We've had first class entertainment out there. We've had Merle Haggard, we've had Chris Young, we've had Lee Bryce a couple times, we've had Pat Benatar, Joan Jett, who's in the Hall of Fame. Uh, we're real proud out there, and it's and it's just a great time. Watch CarsonValleyInn.com and grab those tickets early. It's not a long way to get away to the Carson Valley Inn. Pro Group Management offers workers' comp services to a growing number of industries. As businesses grow and change with the times, the need for a solid workers' comp program must be flexible and up-to-date. The evolving nature of regulations can make staying ahead of complex tasks challenging. But Pro Group Management simplifies the work so your industry can move forward and succeed. Pro Group Management. Workers' comp that works for you. This is Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shad on No Holds Barred Political Forum. Now, from the Nevada Newsmakers broadcast headquarters, here is Sam Shad. Welcome to Nevada Newsmakers. I'm Rachel Dahl. Today on the show, we have Winnie Dowling, who's the state director of the Small Business Development Center at UNR. Winnie, thanks hi, for coming. Hi, Rachel. Thank you for having me. I'm so glad to have you here. We've worked together for a long time over the years, and I've learned a ton from you. And so it's really fun to have you here in your new position. So you're the new state director. I, I am. I'm very excited to finally have this position. It's been, oh, well, I've worked at the SBDC for a lot of years, and I am now finally the state director. That's awesome. That's so good. And you work with an amazing team up there. Um, so Rod Jorgensen used to run the SPDC forever, and he's still around a little bit. He, he retired, but he didn't really. Uh, we have um, some other advisors that are at the University of Nevada, Reno. That's where we are. We're in the College of Business. And um, I'm Jake Carrico is one of our advisors, and so is... Uh, Sandra Rentis and Duke Nishimura. And awesome. those are just the ones at the SBDC at the College of Business. We also have 15 locations around the state, and so we have lots of people at those locations too. So anywhere in the state you can access mm -hmm. resources and help for small business. Yeah, That's yeah. amazing. We're in urban Nevada, Reno and Las Vegas, and also rural Nevada. That's cool. So why don't you tell just a little bit about what the SBDC is and does? The Nevada SBDC is your first call to grow your business. It's, um, it's where you wanna go if you want to start or grow a business. It doesn't cost anything, it's free and confidential. And so you can visit with an advisor, you can, uh, what we would love is if you come to us at the beginning of your idea stage and then um, over the years, maybe, you know, in a a couple of months, maybe you, you need financing, and then maybe later on you need a site. You want to hire employees. You want to transition your business. It's really it just depends on where you are in your business. It's really neat. At any point, you could go. A mm -hmm. uh, business owner could 
come see you guys, mm -hmm. but um, it really is from idea to transition, basically, yeah. right? Yeah, I, I think sometimes the, the word small gets in the way, and um, we, well, SBA considers small to be really anyone, any business less than 500 employees. So, um, and, and depending on your NAICS code, it could be another type of definition. But that's a lot of business. So that's 98.2% of all businesses. So we welcome all businesses. Yeah, that's really exciting. Um, when I first learned that the definition of small business mm -hmm. was 500 employees, that kind of changes the world the, in terms of it, how you look at that. It, it does. It really includes um, all businesses. Yeah. And so during the pandemic, we were obviously really inundated. It was kind of a transition time for us because we were so busy, people needed help with the PPP and the IDLE and the Shuttered Venue Grant, and there were just a lot of different things going on, as you know. I mean, all of us were just, this was a really hard time. Yeah. But it was a, a great time for the SBDC because we got a lot of exposure to larger businesses with employees. And so I, we love it when we can work with the business and not just focus on very, very small. Right. Uh, most people do have 10 employees or less, so that's a lot of businesses, but we also like taking a business to the next level. Yeah, it's exciting. What, what, um, during the pandemic, it seems like the SBDC really stepped into its own. Like You've been around for years and mm -hmm. helped a mm -hmm. lot of Nevada businesses, mm -hmm. I, I know that. <laughs> but it seems like in the pandemic, it was kind of this opportunity to really flourish for you guys. It, it was, and we had thousands and thousands of calls, yeah. which was difficult when um, we weren't allowed to be at the office. So we set up a, a kind of a phone system. We, we tried to make everything work, and luckily we only had to be um, gone from the university for three months. Okay. We, the president allowed us to come back in. Oh, cool. But um, we received just calls about, well, first of all, it was difficult for anyone to find someone who would answer the phone. And so a lot of people just wanted to know that someone was there and, and could help them along the way. Right. And then the information was changing so quickly. Yeah. So you had, you know, day by day, it's like, well, you know, the, the whole payroll protection program was kind of like, Instead of it being, I, I had a banker tell me this, ready, aim, fire, it was more like fire, ready, aim. <laughs> and um, so I felt like the information was just changing uh, <laughs> daily. And so we, would, yeah. we had to jump into the, the world of, the, um, of Zoom calls and webinars, and, and we hadn't done that before. That was kind of new to us. So, so I, what I see has happened is that you guys have developed all of these new ways of dealing with small business mm -hmm. and now you're able to employ those um, in ways that you weren't before and it's made you guys so much more, uh, uh, I don't know, you, and you can touch more businesses. You, yeah. So yeah. talk about some of the focuses that you guys have now as, as we're coming out. You have some amazing programs. Well, one of the programs that we, we used our CARES funding, so the S SBDC is across the nation, and we are part of a large national network, so there are over a thousand SBDCs across the nation. But um, we received our CARES funding, and part of it we used to create a shopping platform called um, Shop Made in Nevada. Okay. And so that was kind of a, a, a new way that we could help really small businesses, especially ones with not, without web, websites, uh, do e-commerce. So it, it doesn't cost anything for the business. You just list your products, and we have over 400 members in Made in Nevada. And um, then you can sell your product, and you, the business, are responsible for shipping your product. Okay. So that was one of them. So if uh, someone in Nevada goes to Made in Nevada, mm -hmm. they can buy things from that website from all over the state. All over the state. That is so cool. We're trying to really grow that in Southern Nevada. We have a really strong presence, I think, in Northern Nevada and, and even rural Nevada. Yeah. Because, well, you know, it's when you are a really small business, it's very difficult to, I mean, a lot of people aren't really comfortable running a website or they just don't have the right. time to manage it. And so this 
allows those businesses the chance to do that. And even if you do have a website, like some of our bigger um, businesses are um, Fisher Space Pen, Davison Tea or Organics, I might not be saying that right, and Kimmy Candy, and we promote the larger businesses too, but we right. really want to focus on products that are made in Nevada. I love that. I think that it's it's really neat to see some of these larger businesses that are Nevada based. Mm -hmm. And then when you're looking at the small rural businesses that you kind of, it legitimizes them too, in a way, because Nevada businesses can be really big and really, really prosperous and successful. And so can these the smaller ones. Mm -hmm. So they feed off of each other maybe? Well, well, exactly. I love that Made in Nevada program. <laughs> Every business started out as small once, right. and so it just, I, I think, does kind of put the smaller businesses more on an equal playing field, and it, it's tough. I mean, you know, it's, it's very hard to run a small business. You do every single job, right. including <laughs> shipping your product. And right. So it, it is tough, but that, yeah. that was one of the ones. Um, another, another program that we have is our business environmental program. And that, um, so our, our normal funding comes, our regular funding comes from SBA, and then the funding is matched from the two universities, UNR and UNLV. And um, so we have th this other program, the Business Environmental Program, is funded by the Nevada Department of Environmental Protection right. and um, EPA, and it helps, it, it provides a service to businesses for free and confidential assistance with government regulations. And that's just a really huge issue for businesses. Right. So if you need help with hazardous waste reduction or pollution prevention, then you can get this assistance without being worried about um, you know, being reported to a regulator. But you have a really good resource that can help walk you through all those yeah. requirements. Yes. And those guys who run that program are just dialed in. It's they are, and um, the Business Environmental Program is lo located at Envy Energy. So when a, someone wants to relocate to Nevada, they will oftentimes be brought, the Business Environmental Program will be brought, brought into the room to talk about the regulations right. and air quality or whatever Perfect. permitting is required. That's awesome. Well, we'll take a little bit of a break and then I want to come back and talk about training because okay. you have super, all these training programs. Okay. <laughs> so we'll be back with Winnie Dowling, who's the State Director of the Small Business Development Center. What do you count on? You count on your power every day. At NV Energy, we've always powered what's important to you, but we're not looking at the past. We're focused on the future. While our standards are high, our rates will remain low. And our commitment to renewables isn't just meeting standards, but leading the way. Because you can count on more than just your power. You can count on the company who brings it to you. That's our promise. You can count on it. I'm here at the Carson Valley Inn in Mendham with Joey Whitaker. One of the things I love about the Carson Valley Inn here in beautiful downtown Mendham is CB steak. I have eaten here so many times. Tell folks what they can expect when they come here to eat. It's a beautiful room, great service. We have certified Angus beef, seafood, lamb, a great range of appetizers, and wonderful desserts. Jean-Michel's done a great job of selecting some beautiful wines for us. The customers love it, and we've got a great selection of cocktails as well. It's not a long way to get away to the Carson Valley Inn. Everyone is talking about opioids, but they're not the only drugs that can be harmful if taken in large quantities or not as prescribed. You also need to be aware of side effects from anxiety drugs, muscle relaxants, sleep aids, and stimulants. Mixing prescription drugs with other drugs or alcohol can be dangerous. If you take Ambien with a glass of wine, it may be enough to stop you from breathing. Prescribed drugs can be just as dangerous as illegal drugs. Take medications only as directed. Leaders find solutions. Politicians are part of the problem. Take Catherine Cortez Masto and Adam Laxalt. Cortez Masto co-sponsored a bill capping insulin costs. Adam Laxalt called a plan that caps costs reckless. No surprise, Laxalt is personally invested in big drug companies. When they make money, he makes money. That's the difference. Catherine Cortez Masto is lowering the cost of drugs. 
Adam Laxalt sells out and cashes in. SMP is responsible for the content of this ad. This is Nevada Newsmakers. We're back on Nevada Newsmakers with Winnie Dowling, who's with the SBDC at UNR. Uh, the state director, which covers the entire state, you have advisors mm -hmm. who work in all the rural communities, Vegas, Reno, mm -hmm. but you also, in, in addition to advising small business, you guys run some amazing training programs. Tell us about about how that all works. Well, we, as I mentioned, we used to do it all in person, and now we can do, we, we mainly do webinars. We do have a few classes back in person, and one of them is our next level class. Uh, it is funded by Bank of Nevada, First Independent Bank, and um, it is an in-person class that is 15 weeks long, and when you are done with the class, you basically have a completed business plan. So every week you have a guest speaker who talks about licensing, how to get capital, marketing, how to hire employees. You know, every, every week is a, a section that a, a small business would normally face. So I, I love that class. I'm, I'm partial to it. It's, it's um, we can only have 25 people in the room. Right. So you're kind of limited to um, how many people you can help, but I feel like it's quality assistance and your yeah. long-term assistance. You also have the peers, uh, other people starting businesses, and you make these long-time friendships and hopefully um, symbiotic relationships, you know, this person can use this person's right. services and, and then they all do, you know, that you, you going forward it's much easier. Uh, we also have a lot of different training. We look for experts all the time that can speak to issues of the day. Marketing, how to create a website, how yeah. to do social media marketing, how to, um, boy, I'm trying to think. We all Classes all over the board. Yeah, for everything. I think that I've taken several over the years. Uh, I remember the very first time I heard Next Level, you guys did a huge class in Fallon. It's yeah. probably been 15 years ago. Yeah. And I remember several of my friends took that class and then started their businesses as kind of as they were going through the class. And there are, there are several of those people who went through that class who still are in business, still running their small business, and they always tell me that they credit that class mm -hmm. for having kept them in business because they learned things that they wouldn't have known. They Some of them didn't even know about a business plan. Mm -hmm. And it's just so exciting to be able to go to those businesses and I always just remember, oh, they were next level. Maybe I should take <laughs> that next level class. But your uh, social media marketing, that class, I think I learned more in that class than any other marketing class I'd ever taken. So not just social media, but just marketing in general. So I never, I always tell people, oh, you have to take those classes. <laughs> well, they're, they're really good. Um, you know, everyone knows how to work in their business, but working on your business is necessary. Yeah. And um, Ben Tidor is one of our amazing employees who helps people with websites. Yes. It's the whole philosophy. We teach Amanda Fish, you know, like we're not gonna run your website, but we will be happy to show you how to set one up and yeah. what goes on a website, what's pleasing. We can give you honest- A lot of feedback. Feed feedback, yes. Yeah. And um, you know that sometimes the truth is Maybe you know not everyone wants to hear the truth, and and we're not always right. But it is important for us to be honest with our, right. with with people. Yeah, you so, yeah, for sure. So they can attend training, or <laughs> they can come in individually, one on one. Right. Um, you also have the Center for Regional Studies. Why don't yeah. you go ahead and tell a little bit about that? So the Center for Regional Studies is run by Brian Bonifant, and he is well known around the Reno community. He it does great work as far as economic development projects. Uh, he tracks uh, demographics, economic data at the neighborhood level. And so we all know about census and a lot of, of, about these national databases, but his is more granular. And it just is very, very useful information. And he has just 
fantastic insight. So sometimes you'll hear um, about, like he just spoke for the um, Association of Realtors. Oh, cool. And he gets asked to speak a lot. So if you ever get a chance to hear him speak, it, it's just always very insightful. But the, another thing that Brian does is, so he provides this community-wide um, oh, work, but he also will help our small businesses. So maybe if you want to start a convenience store and you want to do a neighborhood analysis of where that store would be located, you can look at the demographics around that store, you know, who lives here, what's the income level, what's the traffic count, and what are the taxable sales of other convenience stores, you know, what are my competitors like. So, um, so we get that bonus of him also kind of helping the small businesses. And, That's amazing. And he works with the advisors <laughs> when he does that. Okay. All right. To, to me, that's the most interesting thing about starting a small business mm -hmm. uh, is having a business owner look at the demographics and the potential customer base. Because sometimes when you get digging in, you realize, I don't even have any customers for this thing. Yeah. And so you're able to shift gears before you get yourself in trouble. And, and working with Brian and knowing that information is just like shocking to, to look at the detail that he can provide. It, it's, it's great detail. And then when you pair it with an advisor, the advisor will help interpret that, you know, because a lot of people get overwhelmed with data and they're yeah. not sure quite what to yeah. do with it. But he, um, he works with the advisor. And then also we have students, you know, so we have student interns at UNR and UNLV. And um, they do a lot of the market research. So yeah. combined with his information and information from students, it really gives someone maybe a little more information than just just going out and starting a business. Right. That's awesome. Well, let's take one more little break, okay. and then we'll be back with Winnie, and we'll talk small business some more. Reckless government spending on frivolous projects is bad enough. Even worse, spending to send COVID relief checks to criminals in prison. Senator Catherine Cortez Masto voted to allow COVID relief checks to go to the likes of the Boston Marathon bomber and hundreds of thousands of other convicted murderers and criminals, allowing almost a billion dollars in COVID relief checks to go to hardened criminals in prison. Tell Senator Cortez Masto to start voting against reckless, wasteful spending to stop inflation. Like a traditional handmade basket, retail is woven into the fabric of life in Nevada. From big box to mom and pop, retail supports our communities in countless ways. Jobs for the disabled, team uniforms for kids, help for the elderly, and so much more. Retail employs over 1 in 10 workers. Retail supports Nevada, and we support retail. R-A-N-N-V dot org. Southwest Specialties has been making the homes and businesses of Nevada beautiful for more than 20 years. Their experienced designers and craftsmen create the walkways, backyards, water features, and a variety of outdoor cooking areas that add curb appeal and value to your investment. Call today or visit them at their website and see how they can make your outdoor spaces special. Southwest Specialties, creative, distinctive, Beautiful. The Nevada Builders Alliance has been protecting the interests of the construction industry for over 50 years. Our programs save members thousands of dollars every year and allow them to provide much needed benefits to their employees. Our industry also allows Nevada to grow. If you're thinking about a career in the construction industry, reach out. And if you haven't thought of a career in construction, what are you waiting for? We are the Nevada Builders Alliance. This is Nevada Newsmakers. We're back on Nevada Newsmakers with Winnie Dowling, and we have this elephant in the room we didn't talk about, but uh, as quickly as you can. Mm -hmm. Employees, everyone that mm -hmm. I talk to who's running a business is struggling. How do you find them and how do you keep them? It's definitely a problem. We just did a survey. We had uh, 837 responses. And of course, that was one of the top issues. Really? So um, we have been working with GOED, the Governor's Office of Economic Development, the Reno Sparks Chamber, the, the Chamber, and um, EDON and NSET to kind of discuss this issue and see what we can do. Uh, 
of course, Dieter has, you know, it's, it's hard. I mean, there's no super easy answer, right? right? Like people need to be paid more, but then, you know, small businesses can't afford that. And right. it's, it, you know, there's just so many options now for the employee right now. So um, one of the things that we're going to do, take a small step, um, October 8th, I think is, you can look on our, our training website and okay. see, but we are doing a webinar with Dieter and they have a really great website and they have people that will also um, facilitate the hiring of employees, you know, like identifying where it, the employees for different companies. And so we thought, well, this is one way that we could we could help, but maybe people don't really know how to use oh, the Dieter yeah. website yeah. and find more employees. And of course, the Department of Employment and Training, Training yeah. and Rehabilitation, I think, yeah. is um, free. And and so, oh. you know, it's one way, instead of using Indeed or just searching out those businesses, we thought, well, let's give that a try. Okay, so and small business owners can go directly to Dieter yes. and say, here's what I'm looking for, yes. and then they can, be a resource and help. So you're right. having a webinar. Yes. So small business owners can jump on that webinar and yes. talk with Dieter. Yes. Oh, that's and, awesome. And find out how to how to do that and what those resources are. It's you know it's not the perfect solution. Sure. I mean it may be <laughs> just one baby step, <laughs> but I think it's always important to advertise uh, that you're looking for businesses and we'll just keep trying to find. Yeah, ways. I, I don't know how to keep people, how to how to have people stay. It's it's a challenge for right. sure. Right. No one answer probably, but at least we're making an effort. Mm -hmm. And so I am just really grateful that you came on the show, and I want you to just you. keep doing the good work you're doing <laughs> with small businesses because they really are the backbone. And yes, they are. And as a small business owner, you don't have time to. There's so no. many things. I mean, you mm -hmm. are making your widget. Mm -hmm. And nobody taught you how mm -hmm. to do bookkeeping right. and hiring and human resources and all of these other things. Right. So having you guys as a resource, I just want more and more small business owners to know that you're there. So thanks for coming on. Thank you, Rachel. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for joining us on Nevada Newsmakers today uh, with Winnie Dowling from the SBDC. Reckless government spending on frivolous projects is bad enough. Even worse, spending to send COVID relief checks to criminals in prison. Senator Catherine Cortez Masto voted to allow COVID relief checks to go to the likes of the Boston Marathon bomber and hundreds of thousands of other convicted murderers and criminals, allowing almost a billion dollars in COVID relief checks to go to hardened criminals in prison. Tell Senator Cortez Masto to start voting against reckless, wasteful spending to stop inflation. Modern Boutique Ahern Hotel and Events Center in Las Vegas. Host meetings and events on two floors. Stay in luxurious rooms and suites. Unlimited branding opportunities. Regional Italian cuisine by Chef Mark Segrisi. Flexible event spaces. Full buyout options. Visit ahernhotel.com today. As always, you can watch Nevada Newsmakers 24 hours a day at NevadaNewsmakers.com. You can also check our archive going back to 2005 on our website. Again, NevadaNewsmakers.com. See you on the next show.